L4, L5, S1, 2, and 3 make up the sciatic nerve. Sciatica. If you have pain that originates in your lower back, into your glute, all the way down to your calf, and into your foot, you are suffering from sciatica. My name is Dr. John Saunders, and in this video, I'm going to give you my four favorite stretches to help get rid of your sciatica in the comfort of your home. There are many causes to sciatica, everything from a lumbar disc bulge or herniation, to spinal degenerative disc disease, to osteoarthritis, spinal stenosis, a spondylolisthesis, all the way to tight muscles in the hip area or the low back. As well, often present, we'll find a spinal alignment issue in the lumbar spine or the pelvis that creates a situation where it just makes it difficult to heal your sciatica. Here's my disclaimer, before attempting any of these stretches, please speak to your health provider to make sure they're okay for you. And finally, just before we get to the stretch, I wanna mention one more thing. If you are struggling with sciatica, there are a few things you need to consider. You need to consider your sleeping position, your sitting position either in front of your TV, your computer, or your car, and how you go about your day moving around and lifting things. All of these things can continue to exacerbate the underlying cause of your sciatica, and to ignore them, it will delay your recovery. Let's get to the stretches right now. So for the first stretch we're going to do is the prone extension stretch. Now there's a few variations in terms of how you can do this, but you need to work to within your tolerance. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lie on our stomachs, and we're just going to lie on our fists. And in some cases, this will be enough to get that stretch. What we're trying to do is to promote the natural curve or lordosis in the lower back. So this might be the first position you stay in. If this is causing significant discomfort, then this will be your first goal. The expectation though is that we move along and we do move to get up onto our elbows. Make sure our posture is good, we're looking straight ahead. And again, we wanna hold this position for 30, 60, 90 seconds. Eventually, we do wanna to move to a more dynamic stretch where we're gonna start almost like a push-up. We're gonna come up slowly, maybe not to your full range, and then come back down again. Just breathe comfortably, come up a little further, and you wanna let your pelvis sag, so to speak. And then a little bit further, maybe you can get to maximum tricep extension here and hold the position and then come back down one more time. We're creating some traction, some pumping in the disc. And then ultimately what we want to do is hold this position. It's really focusing on letting our pelvis sag in a nice relaxed posture. Now an alternative for the prone extension, if you can't get on your elbows, your knees, or you find it's just too hard to hold your body up, a very good variation can be done standing. So this is a pretty simple stretch. The same principle applies. We want to visualize that lordosis or that curve. So we want to create some extension, opening up and tractioning some of those lower discs. And how we're going to do that, we're going to take our hands on our side. I like to put my thumbs around the the PSISs or the SI joints just to create some stability in the pelvis and you want to bend back. You don't want to do this. You want to just kind of use this as a pivot point around your thumbs or hands and just extend up. Look up to the ceiling a little bit. It's good for your neck too. And again, hold, working up to about 30 to 60 seconds if you can three to four times a day. Now, for some of you, if your range of motion is just trying to get up into a straight position, then that is where you start. But ultimately, what we want to do over a period of weeks or even months in some cases, we want to be able to extend our thoracic cage or our thorax posterior to our pelvis or behind. For the next stretch that can be very effective for sciatic pain is stretching the hamstrings. Sometimes our hamstrings will get very tight from excessive sitting or sports activities and it can create some tension along the pelvis creating misalignment in the lower back and this in turn will put pressure on those lower nerve roots that can create static like pain. All we're going to do is we're going to sit up tall, we're going to bring one leg forward and as we bring the one leg forward we'll look at our left leg for now and we want to make sure that as we bend forward that we do not flex forward or round our back, we actually want to keep our lordosis or our neutral curve and really lean in 
to that hamstring. You'll feel it right in the back of the belly, the muscle, right into the knee. And you're gonna hold this for 15 to 30 seconds. You can do this three to six times a day. And I always recommend that you do it on both sides, even the unaffected leg, just to try to keep things in balance. The next stretch is gonna focus on the piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle has close proximity to the sciatic nerve. In fact, in a certain percentage of people, the sciatic nerve goes right through the piriformis muscle. If piriformis is the cause of your sciatica, this stretch will be absolutely relieving for you. Feet flat on the floor to start. We're gonna sit up nice and tall. We're gonna bring one of our legs, the affected side, up to the opposite knee. And again, when we get this up here, this might be, you might, some of you might be up like this because you can't get it down. That's okay, that is your starting point. If that's where you start, you hold this position 15 to 30 seconds, three to six times per day. The progression is again, nice and tall. Take our hand, try to drop our knee down as far as we can. And then again, just like the hamstring stretch, we're gonna flex or hinge, sorry, at our hip. And so our neutral spine will be maintained. And as we come through that, you're gonna feel that in the middle part of your glute or the back of your hip. Hold the stretch again, 15 to 30 seconds, multiple times a day to really get that muscle to relax. And certainly last but not least is the sciatic nerve glide. There's a few things we're trying to accomplish with this nerve glide. One is we're trying to get the nerve flossing or moving to try to break up any adhesions that might be formed along the path of the nerve. The other thing though, is that we wanna to try to desensitize the nerve to the pain. So this is a very good way to do that. And for some of you, we're gonna to have to progress slow. One of the tests that we can do clinically is called the seated SLR or the seated straight leg raise. We just have the patient start to raise their leg and right away, the moment they do that, it can start to shoot pain into their leg or they'll feel it in the lower back. So this is the position we're gonna start. The question is, can you extend your leg and get it straight? And if you can, then you can progress right away. However, for some of you, the first progression will be just to get that nerve to release or to desensitize enough that you can actually extend. When you extend, the next stage will be, again, shoulders back, getting your foot plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. And you're just gonna start to move that back and forth. You might start with 10 to 20 reps. And then finally, the full nerve glide movement will involve sitting up straight, good posture, not slouching forward. And we're going to, as we extend our leg, we're gonna extend our head. And then we're gonna come down and flex our leg, and flex our head. We're going to extend nice and slow. You can try to point your toe in some cases that may be helpful for you, it might not. You're gonna to have to play around a little bit just to know where you are in the progression of the nerve glide and what you can handle. And how you know is if the nerve is excessively irritated a few hours later or the next day, you've likely done too much. If you've been doing these stretches for a while and you find that your sciatica is just not improving, this is a time to seek professional advice. The correct treatments aimed at the right tissues in order for you to get well. Otherwise, you'll continue to spin your wheels and you'll become exceedingly frustrated with your pain and how it's affecting your quality of life. If you like the video, I'd really appreciate it if you give the thumbs up. If you can, tell me in the comments below what stretch you found most beneficial. And if you're new to my channel and like the content I'm putting out, you might consider subscribing so you can be informed when I upload a new video. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Until then, stay well.